All right, welcome back to Noise Avocation Podcast. I'm Ryan here with Jeremy. Hello, world. If you're watching on YouTube, this is the first video episode that we've done, so hopefully everything turns out post edit all good. Um, we've been working on this for like quite a while now, actually, and just made a ton of different studio upgrades, and so we'll be bringing artist interviews all video pretty soon we got to work a little thing out with that still but we'll be doing some more episodes with just the two of us yeah you get to see our fucking smiling faces i they don't really smile quite as often <laughs> uh, I, do, I don't think it will but hey but uh, we tried doing this episode like as an instagram live a while back and Jeremy's computer was having some issues, or his phone was, and or they just don't like the way that mine communicates with his or something, and uh, he couldn't see me, and the Shit audio all was all screwed up, up so we're going to so redo it. We're going to do it as an actual episode, uh, but we were talking about some of our favorite debuts of all time, and we tried to kind of keep it like not being super common albums. I mean, there's going to be a couple in there that are obvious uh, or you've heard us talk about like a million times, like Jeremy's shirt he's wearing. Yeah, dude, just get that out of the them. way, you know. But that but being I kind of tried to add in things that were like, ones. I want you to hear this type of thing. Like, this is a great record. This was their first album. Um, some of you guys will know them. Some of you won't. But Jeremy. I'll let you start because I know you're going to get your obvious one out of the way. Okay, yeah, Warzone. Don't forget to struggle. Don't forget the streets. But it's the only um, hardcore album on this list. Like, I purposefully did that just to... That's surprising. Um, just to give more variety, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Well, I was, I was kind of, like, playing my list off of your list. I was thinking I might keep this off because Jeremy might have it, like... I didn't put Joy Division on because I thought you would probably have it. But then again, since you were trying to be not as obvious, you might not. I actually, and it, well, here's another, the other stipulation with it. The debut album has to be better than the rest of the discography. So in that case, there's a lot that I didn't pick because and it's a good thing because it means the band got better, at least yeah. in my opinion. Well, a couple of mine would be, I wouldn't say they were better, but but you prefer up there them. with like my favorite, right? Yeah. That, yeah, that's how I went about it. With like I didn't put Thirty Six Chambers on there, neither because I. I felt that was kind of implied. Biggie, but if I go by that, I wouldn't I have didn't. put my main one on there. But I had to. It's the greatest fucking album ever. I didn't put Biggie on there. Um, I just kind of tried to I don't know mix it up with genres and shit. Yeah, Which I'm sure. glad you did because I was kind of expecting a bunch of hardcore albums that I was like, well, dude, I've heard I this one. But then a lot of times I'm like writing shit down because I'm like, I don't know, this band, this band. I don't even have any metal on my list. Oh, I got some metal. And it was. Well, now I'm curious to hear your shit cause because I, it, I don't know. it was hard for me again because I'm like, all right, dude, I really I love this album, but. The fucking third one is tits, dude. Like, you know what I mean? It's hard. So I just, like, I'm going to really fucking... And you said you're going to throw some zingers or whatever. So I'm yeah. like, I'll throw some fucking zingers, dude, you know? Well, I had a couple honorable mentions that I would like to get out of the way, actually, before you uh, start your first. Okay. Kill Whitney Dead's Inhaling the Breath of a Bullet, I was going to put on there. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Kill Whitney Dead for whatever reason, if you're a movie fan... And you're uh, just a fan of heavy shit in general. Like, definitely check that band out. And I think they're doing some vinyl reissues of the catalog coming out. They have out. news tomorrow. There's a... a at the day supposed of... supposed to drop yeah. something tomorrow. Yeah. And I know Matt's working on... Or at the day of it, you guys will hear this. And Matt's working on reissuing the whole catalog, but I don't know what he's starting with. It'll be interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would like to say Black Sabbath's first record... I don't. It's not my favorite album of theirs, but it is definitely top three, one of their best records. It kind of helped define their sound, but I left it off because it was sort of an obvious one. That's what I did I with wanna... um, Terror's first album. Yeah, which I believe I held up and couldn't even see myself or whatever when we did the live thing. But that's it. Like I left that off because oh, that's, that's right. Because I kind of obvious you. too. To, you I know? can see you hold it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
and that was I left that off, but I brought it. But that's like an honorable mention I have. And then, like we said earlier, there's so many. Nine Inch Nails, Pretty albums. Hate Machine would have been another one that was pretty fucking close to making mine. But a lot of people know that, so I was trying to keep it keep a little it. lesser known. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there's um there's a few honorable mentions, but... Oh, Freya Riding's first record, it. too. See? There's, these are going to be all over the place. So. I lo- Yeah. Um, I'll give you one I... last weird one that I left off the list because... I'm torn. It's not always my favorite out of their di- discography, and it was Bauhaus's first album. Yeah, it is great, but I like the following it, more. Yeah, so I I brought it, but I didn't. I, you know, it's hard to pick them, dude. It's hard yeah. to pick them. Uh, go ahead with. I seen you pull a record up there. Yeah, I brought the the Warzone record up just to show it. Um, this is the uh, Revelation Records pressing like repress from a few years ago but uh actually it's from 2016 so i don't know time goes by fucked up i thought it was like 2022 but uh came out in 87 i feel like they changed my life quite a bit this was uh the first reissue um in a long ass time on revelation like up until this i had it on a cd that was like split with the um Second album, Open Your Eyes, mm. and uh, so that was cool, but this album's fucking life-changing, and a lot of people, I mean, this is on a lot of people's lists that are into hardcore, you know? Um, yeah, I seen, like, a video of Scott Vogel talking about that and Leeway, and oh yeah, he threw some uh, newer band at the end, though, because he was like, this doesn't stand, you know, as best of all time, but he's like, I want him to get noticed, so I yeah, thought that, that was cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean the uh, intro bust. It's your choice. Even like all the the lyrics in here are like very motivational and um, you know real life situations, and uh, it, like it's positive, but it, uh, but it's not like cheesy positive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not like good vibes only type of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, uh, be true to yourself right and the like, people the around crew, you type of shit as one yeah like in the it's almost like honestly it's like if there was a like uh commandments or something to to that to hardcore or like a bible you could probably use at least half the record ha- yeah if not that more. record to actually be you like, probably could make it yeah it could be the take the lessons standard. right to take be lessons the, from the writing in the stone so yeah that's probably, and that's like an obvious one for me, but like I said, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wearing the shirt. Fuck yeah, dude. My obvious one is, we've talked about it a million times too, but Nas Illmatic. Yep, that's I, I left it uh, off. That's my favorite Nas album too. Yeah, I mean, I you knew I was going to put it yep. on there just by default. We've talked about it a hundred times. If for some reason you're unfamiliar, I mean, you really need to do your homework because... There's no reason that you should not know that record if you're a hip hop fan. It sort of like embodies all of New York at that time, um, and you know the area that Nas grew up in, all that shit. Like uh, albums like that, like the infamous Mob Deep, Hell on Earth, Mob Deep, um, all that stuff that came out like early '90s, before pre '95, like really s- painted a picture for how shit was at that time. Yeah, and now it's it's good. I mean, that album has sold a lot of copies. A lot of people know it now, and that's like a good thing, man. Because that is, I was gonna bring in all three like covers. A, yeah, but I was like, ah, never mind. That's a, it. But it, again, it's like perfect storytelling of what was going on then. Yeah. And then you mentioned Mob Deep, and that was an that's another one where it's like that's oh, the second album, man. Yeah, well, Juvenile you know? Hell was their first, right? And it was good, but it wasn't. I mean, the infamous, that, that like, changed shit. Like, that was their Illmatic. Uh, yeah, for um, sure. But to their credit, like, when Juvenile Hell came out, they were, like, 15 or something. Like, they were super young. I mean, you look at them on the cover, they're just, like, Yeah, they're kids. kids. The crisscross and shit. Yeah. They just got normal pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like... On they're, they're on the right way, yeah. Shit's funny. Max aren't the fronts. All right, what do you got next? My next one is on a CD because I don't... I don't have it on a record, and it is Dropkick Murphy's Do or Die. 
Um, I would not have expected that to be so, on there. Dude, I fu- solid fucking album. Um, it's my favorite because it's it has the uh, original singer. Came out in 97, but I didn't hear it in, you know, till a little later on. Probably 99-ish, 2000 maybe. But every... Every track on here is fucking a banger, a killer. Um, That's one of those bands that, like, I, now now that I don't really drink all that often, right. it's harder for me to listen to because it's, like, really good drinking music. No, I will say this. This is the only Dropkick album that I listen to. Like, uh, The Gang's All That's Here I is okay. Like, I, I'll play that every now and then. That would have been... I mean, aside from, like, Taylor Swift or something, that would have been, like, the last thing I expected to be on your list because I know between, like, you just dumped a bunch of Flogging Molly. Yep. And, like, Dropkick Murphys are kind of in that same realm. But, But like, Real Mackenzies and shit like that. But it's, like, in this, the punk rock aspect on this one, there's more more of it than the Irishness on this album to me. But there's still a lot of fucking street working man Irishness to it that I love. That was like the mentality, like that they were going for. Like um, they were trying to re-embody that time, and that was how it was there too. I mean, if you've watched like uh, I don't know, Peaky Blinders and shit like that, like you know, like that time era was like a real working class type of. Yeah, dude. It's almost like here. I mean, it's factories and shit. Like that's what you had. That's what you grew up around. Like that's where you were expected to go after high school. Yeah, and the shit's fucked for the birds, man. But like track four on on here, never alone. Um, that's like a, a that I remember listening to that, and it like you know that, that's an empowering song, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends and shit. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of like what that's all about, and it's like a positive. It's, again, you know, like you said, it's the working class thing. But there's a song on here about um, the singer, I believe it's Far Away Coast. Yeah, duh, and uh. It's about him going off to war, and they will not do that song live. Like, only, right. he, only he does it because it's his song, and he's the only one that experienced that. Gotcha. Which I always thought was cool, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's commendable. Yeah, it's like, uh, that's not my shit to sing or whatever. Maybe the song would be huge, though, if they did do it. Yeah, and it's crazy, though, how that band is now, right? Like, fucking, when they... Got on the Departed soundtrack. I was like, "Oh shit, man! They just hit it big." It fit the it fit on there though. Oh, yeah, like, it's perfect, perfect. And that was two thousand and six. That came out. Yeah, yep. eighteen years. What's your next one? My next one is Pharaoh Monch's Internal Affairs. That was uh, one that I was thinking of picking too, but I was like, <laughs> I know you're gonna. Technically, like, Organized Confusion would have been his debut, but as a solo artist, this was his debut. And Pharaoh Monch, to me, like, he's one of my favorite rappers just because nobody sounds like him. Like, nobody has that style of flow. It's almost, like, preachy, kind of, in a way. Like, the way he enunciates his words. And, like, if you're familiar with Brother Ali, which I know you are, that's where he got a lot of his cadence from, like the way that he raps and everything. Okay. And because I know, like, that he's big into him. Same with Apathy. Like, Apathy, I know, is definitely a huge Pharaoh Monch fan. But one thing that I like about Pharaoh Monch is he's asthmatic, but like, he raps and you can't tell because, like, he will, he has amazing breath control. Like, he'll follow out just you know, eight to above oh, and beyond I guess bars. I didn't know he was asthmatic. Yeah. Well, um, he has, like, a line in a song that says, when he rhymes, you never believe he's asthmatic, that type of thing. Oh, okay. I guess but, that like, makes sense. If you listen to that 13 album, you can hear in some of the songs where he really, like, takes it there, he'll start, like, having, like, a little shortness of breath, and you can hear it in the recording. But See, it sounds cool because... Yeah, I thought that was he's an like, effect. No, that's his voice. That's gnarly. Um... And there is a lot of vocal effects on there, too, so it might not be his voice and the particular thing you're talking about. Right. But if you hear him start to run out of breath a little bit, like, that's, you know, he has as Legit it, thing. The guy's a phenomenal wordsmith. Like, he ties some shit together that you're like, how the fuck did you even rhyme that with that? I feel he's um def- under underrated nowadays. I mean, it, and I guess maybe that's a hip-hop thing, but I don't feel yeah. you hear enough but, about him. 
Not really. Um, Eminem did shout him out one time, said Pharaoh Monch was like the king of the underground. And uh, I think that brought him like a lot of notoriety. Oh, but like cool. he's one of those instances where like if you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And those who know love it. But if you don't know, like you're just a little too late to the game. Right, guess, right, like, right, right. Um, it's almost kind of like common. Like he's a rapper's rapper. Yeah, it's definitely. It's not just somebody that you're going to throw on in the car, even though I do. Uh, but he's not like a club song. It makes the shit makes you think, or it sets a story, tells a story, puts you in a place and time. Well, yeah, he's doing it for like art's sake and to say something. He's not yeah. trying to fucking shake your ass and make a buck that way. I think it's like has actual respect for him as an artist, you know? Yeah, and he has, it's not on that record, but there's a song that he has that's all from the point of view of a bullet. And I just like the way it's written. Like, nobody that I've heard has written anything like that. And it's just a really cool point of view for a song. That's what's up. What do you got next? My next one is a, a hip-hop album. Actually, um, I'll just get this other CD one out of the way. My other CD one is DMX, It's Dark and Hell is Hot. And I almost didn't grab it, but, dude, I fucking love this album when it came out. Like... I, I, don't, I mean, I was a kid. I was like 12, 13. What was it, 98? Yeah. I was yeah. like, so this had a big, like, um, negative effect on me, and I thought it was, you know what I mean? Like, this shit was <laughs> hilarious. Like, I wanted a crotch racket, you know, and all that shit. I wanted oh, to Because of all the, the Rough Hell, Riders yeah, videos. Dude, those videos, yeah, and that yeah. shit was so hard. But, you know, now that I'm older and you, know, you think about it, this shit was, it's like, and it still is. Yeah, like, all the puffy shit was big at that time. And then DMX comes out. DMX was like the the more street bad boy kind of. Like he was like a legit. I I go to jail. I smoke crack. Yeah. Life's fucked up. And he like and you just sing about he it. He pretty much lived that until he died. Right. But yeah, that was his mentality. It's like you might rap about this shit, but I live this shit. And like, it's like un, this was like the number one album. I mean, it sold a shit ton of copies, but I you know it's yeah. that good. Well, we were talking about that how. He sold. He had a two number one albums in the yeah, same in the year. same year. Yeah, but I looked that up later on. I know, like, I want to say Led Zeppelin did it. There was like eight or nine other artists that, oh, that, have that done all it. had it like right consecutively, like in the same year. He was the first hip hop person to do it. I think he was the first hip hop artist to do it. Either him or Jay Z. Oh, it would have been. He would have been the first to do it before Jay Z because, um, ninety eight, and Jay Z had what, two records, but not in the same year. Led Zeppelin, DMX, Jay Z, Garth Brooks, Tupac, and System of a Down are the only artists that. So had... DMX was first, over Jay Z. I'm saying. Well, I don't know if he is or not. That doesn't. Oh, it I thought it order. was an. Oh, I no. thought it was an order. Yeah, like these are not in order. It's just a random order. These are not like in any order yeah. for me. But um, but either way, I mean, fucking huge. Like that hasn't even like you would think like Drake or somebody's done that by now. Like, yeah, you would think. It. I mean, but, but he's kind of singles world now too. It's the singles world, and they put shit out, and then like, I don't know. A lot of artists will do where they kind of appease to shorter attention spans. So they put out a record that's only 25, 30 minutes versus one that's about an hour long. And some people say that 40 minutes is the perfect length for a record. Depends what the music is. It depends on what it is, though. Like, if you got a prog record, 40 minutes is short. But it could be the perfect length for a hip-hop record. It could be the perfect length for... Um, a rock album of some sort. I don't know. I'm sure there's a ton of uh, albums just thinking that, of that like... is the perfect length, but I was looking and I was like, okay, I'm going to look through some of my favorite albums. And a lot of them are like an hour or more, but I will say if I get a hip-hop record that's like 38 songs and it's like an hour and a half long, it's too long. Yeah, see... Just release it as two albums. Anything that I... 40 minutes to me is a fucking long time in most of the stuff that I listen to, Well, that's because you're coming from, like, 
punk and hardcore it, demos right, where so, 14 minutes to 20 yeah, minutes Yeah, it's like is whole like record, this, 15 minutes yeah, is yeah. like, holy shit. But honestly... It's like ni- 19 songs. <laughs> like, like, to me, I like the half hour to 45 minutes, honestly, as far as listening. But yeah. like, yeah, um... It depends on what it, it is. It depends what it is, yeah, for sure. If it's jazz, man, that's like a whole another topic or whatever, which I that's, I did leave... I have no jazz on here. I was going to put Lee Morgan. My issue with jazz was it it was hard to find a lot of their first records because, like, some of them are so rare that I I don't have them or, like, dated so far back. Like, Miles Davis's debut was, like, way the fuck back. Yeah, you're talking in, like, the 40s. Yeah, and I think it's – some of his first stuff was on 78. I don't know. I'm sure his first album was a 33, but it was, like – in the dawn of the age of 33 yeah. so i don't have it and there was a lot of stuff like i was thinking marvin gay but i'm like fuck marvin gay was doing doo-wop in like the late 50s before he even got yeah, marvin, linked up with motown yeah, yep so because like what's going on would definitely make a list but that wasn't a debut like, oh that's that was way down, way the, down the road yeah for sure Quincy I, Jones was another one that i kind of looked at like i have oh, Quincy's he's way like, back too i have his like third record mm-hmm and it's he's young 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 on it but i don't i've never even seen the first one i don't i have not i have not all right um well actually i'm gonna save you i'm gonna get my last hip-hop one out of the way okay so the last hip-hop one i had was dating families what's on my mind which i feel like is a definitely a lesser known album outside of the midwest area mm-hmm. i mean i know there's a lot of people that have heard it michigan wise but like anybody listening outside of this you know tri-state area ohio michigan indiana etc if you haven't heard this this came out in 1992 and a lot of people put like their favorite albums from 92 from 96 and you know all the 90s ages but i've never once seen dayton family on those lists you know it, it maybe it is only like a midwest thing but that album's fucking amazing cuz i've talked to and we knew about people it when we all were kids. around yeah like it, i don't know i heard flint town when i was like i don't know 12 11 yeah, something about, like that yeah for sure i and was in your high and i heard that 94 that that's crazy but i think since they were primarily Flint and not Detroit. That was a lesser known area, especially at the time, like before the water crisis, it wasn't a household name. Right. Like outside of Michigan, you didn't oh, really Flint? know Flint. Yeah, no, yeah. Only we knew that Flint was a fucking, no offense to all my Flint people, but. Yeah, <laughs> you were going to say shit, shithole. No, I was, uh, was going to say. It's got some rough areas for sure. But fucking, I mean, it's a city, it's going to yeah. happen. But this. But that's your favorite Dayton family album, too? No. Oh, I was gonna that say that was the that one that broke the broke the, the criteria rule? for okay. that. I w- FBI is my favorite. I was gonna say that's my favorite too. FBI, is but this shit. is a very. I mean, you could tie them pretty much. Yeah, and I will say this record sounds awful though. Uh, I have the tape of it, and the tape sounds better, and that is almost never the circumstance. The case? Yeah, I remember when you. Um, I wish you I had a that. CD, but I can't fucking find one. Same with FBI. I have a tape. If anybody has the CD, I'll buy it. If anybody has a record, I'll buy it. But I'm not paying you a million dollars for it because I've seen a lot. And I'm I mean, I've only thinking listened it'll to probably it bootleg, be... actually, now that you say that. Yeah. I'm thinking it'll probably be <laughs> not the greatest quality. But <laughs> this copy is actually signed by a bootleg of the group. And uh, I was thinking of sending it to Shoestring to try to have him, like, re-sign the other side. But I don't even know how to get in touch with the dude, so... I found this on eBay, like, years ago. Like, I didn't actually meet Bootleg. But I was scrolling through, looking at Dayton Family shit, found this. It had a picture of Bootleg sign in the actual record. Yeah, that's sick. It, and it's then, Michigan uh, shit, dude. It's like, yeah, we're It was from some it. guy in Michigan. You know, definitely. But this record's, like, I don't know, it goes for about $120-ish. Yeah, it's pretty but rare. But it's like a cutout, and it's rare, like, because they only did it the one time. Like, that was... But it sucks that it sounds like shit. It does, but it's awesome to have it. No, no And no. the fact that it's autographed. Like, I think yeah. I paid 85 for it, I think. Oh, that's... If it's under under 100 bucks, dude, you're fucking golden. I, yeah. I hear people paying, like, 300 bucks for used T-shirts, dude. Nah, fuck that. Exactly. Because like, the T-shirts that you're spending $300 on are old, 
and I get it that some of them are hard to find. If you kept them in good condition, cool. But a lot of times, like, you go to wear one of those fucking T-shirts, and it's got, like, 800 holes by the bottom. There's a hole in the armpit. It's all, it's, like, 18 shades lighter of black. (laughs) When we were, uh, when, uh, shout out to Jason Zilikowski, when we were at Tide Down, we were, like, playing, like, a little, like, oh, I wonder, uh, Oh, he's younger than when that fucking band shirt came out. Like, there oh, was yeah, a yeah. lot of it, dude. It's, it's like, and in my mind, I'm Vintage like, clothes are a huge I want thing. fucking brand new shit. Like, I sold my shit to get fresh shit, you yeah. know? It's crazy. Especially when it comes to white shirts. Because yeah. white yellows after a while. And Fuck once, yeah, it does. Like, I have this awesome Wu-Tang shirt, but mm-hmm. the, it's all yellowed, and I never wear it because it looks gross to me. But, like, I don't want to get rid of it because it's dope, but I don't want to wear it because it looks... It, it, I don't know, dingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Looks like it's fucking moldy and... Yeah. Bleh. And I've That's tried, funny. like, vinegaring it and doing all the Can old you... lady tricks, but and it'll get it a little bit out, but it's just so old that it's... Now, if you bleached it, would it fucking I think it'll fuck up the print. Or fuck up the print? Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, it's thinking. all colored. Like, the whole frontal of the shirt is all color print. Yeah, so I, wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do it either. Yeah. I don't want it to, like, break down. Yeah. No, for sure. What do you got next? My next one may be on your list. I'm not sure. But, um... It is Iggy Pop's The Idiot. I was going to bring it, but it's not. It's not on your list? No. Okay. It was for, like, ten minutes. For ten minutes? (laughs) Okay, and this is my favorite Iggy record. Um, this, This version here... Is uh from like four men with beards sounds like not very good. I have an OG of it. Yeah, I know you have a, a normal one, but uh, dude, I don't. This album is just Sister Midnight and fucking it's pre- this like put Iggy back. I can't believe it came out on RCA for one like yeah that he got on there. But um, night clubbing. There's a lot of dope tracks. Is on that here. the China Girl? How many songs did Bowie produce on there? Most uh, most of it, didn't All he? of them, I believe, on I this thought. first one. Yeah, yeah. they were... Because Bowie covered China Girl, like, on another record. Right. Down the road. And the, the rumor a lot of people is, don't know that, though. Really? I, I feel like most no. people think China Girl's a yeah, Bowie a, song. Yeah, definitely, because it was on, like, a huge record. Yeah. Um, But the, what I heard from, um, from reading was... Um, what is it? Yeah, I know. I got it all screwed up. <laughs> anyway, here's this fucking record. But I did read that, okay, every Iggy wrote it. That's what they're saying. Well, but is... Bowie put it in Iggy's name, and then when he put it on his fucking record, yep. all the rights are in Iggy's name, so that's how Iggy stayed afloat. Oh, yeah, Like, yeah, he did him a favor. Him. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna put this in your name. Like, so... Well, because they did, like, three records. That's a records, little unknown thing. Three too. records together on each other's sides. Like, right. Like, Iggy helped Bowie with a bunch of albums. All the Berlin years. Yep, yep. And then... See, that's the other... Lust for Life is also a fucking dope-ass album. I didn't and like that's another blah, Bowie blah, one. blah, even though it's kind of poppy. Yeah. But I thought yeah. it was cool. No, I there's a I like a, a lot. A That's just my of, favorite one. Picture of Iggy Pop and Dad Jeans on there. Yep. Because it was like eighty four. Yeah, yeah. Or something I have like it on. That. I have that on cassette, I believe. And uh, since you mentioned Joy Division, that is the album that Ian Curtis killed himself to. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up before we got to the next. Oh. Imagine having that copy. Yeah, I, I thought about that before. Uh, I wonder who has it. I, I would imagine his wife probably destroyed it. At least that's what I'd do with it if it if I was in her position. Um, cause yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, it would be a constant reminder. Yeah, or even any of that music. But I don't know. I might. I don't know, man. I, me, I, I might keep it. But I don't know. It'd have to be. I'm you, just you, like, you don't in know her if position, you're not in that I'd position. I'd be like, I never want to fuck you, Iggy. I never want to see you again. Like, yeah, you know? no. But it's not like it's his fault. No, it's but, not. I'm just saying, like, I. I don't. I would have gotten rid of the record probably. So yeah. right. But if it were from the outside in, as a collector. Oh that yeah, would that would be insane. Bad. That's like the equivalent to having that. Uh, the Lennon copy. Lennon copy. So yeah, I think it'd be even cooler to have the doesn't, fucking Joy Division one. But doesn't Elton John or something have that copy? Somebody bought it at an auction. I thought. 
I'm not. Sh- I know it sold for like an enormous amount of money. I'm not sure how much. It was a lot. Who bought it? I thought it, it was, was like eight rumored, million dollars or some crazy shit like that. I thought it was rumored to be Elton John, but maybe not. Either way, um, yeah, from a collector's standpoint, that's like like some holy grail stuff right there. Oh yeah, that's gold. Gold, gold. But yeah, Iggy. I mean, and uh, I I kind of used our rule of like, well, that's the solo work instead of going with the Stooges. Because the Stooges, I mean, that's been. I feel like more lists have that first 1969 album or the self-titled one. But, yeah, and, you know. and I and that's not my favorite Stooges record. No, I like Raw Power Fun ha- or Fun House more. Yeah, me too. What do you? What's your next one? My next is Tracy Chapman's first record, which everybody knows. Fast Car, that's a common song, yep. but I think like the rest of the record is a million and one times better than Fast Car. Fast Car is like a cutesy love song and whatever, and it's a well-written song. It's good, but like if you get to songs like um, you, you think okay, you think Fast Car is a cutesy love song? Kinda. I mean, it's a song about like. There's sadness to it, but it's also a love story. I guess I I took it. I didn't take it as a happy song. I guess I always took but it I as like two way people deep into Tracy Chapman either. But that I always song took it like two sad people as fuck to me. getting out of a bad situation. And I take it as two people thinking about getting out of a bad situation, and they're stuck in the bad situation. But yeah, yeah I like I, I like talking like how people. Uh, hear things differently and perceive them like that differently. You know what I mean? Across the lines, though, like that was a song that dealt with like all of segregation and stuff. Yeah, like now the, you're talking shit I have no that... idea about, so go ahead. So Across the Lines is on the album, too, and it's a song that talks about like how when there was like black and white drinking fountains and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it wouldn't have gotten radio play because there's some like really graphic shit in there and it's just not. As, and that's why I mean about Fast Car is like you can hum along, sing along to it. It's a little more upbeat, and the lyrical content isn't as dark. Yeah, you're like the melody yeah. of it is. Whereas like... a lot of other things on the album deal with like racism, um, domestic violence, like fucking yeah, child heavy, abuse. Heavy like, shit. I mean, it covers everything. And I know like when she made the record, she was con- – they tried convincing her not to make it an acoustic album and she was like i'm making it how i want to like you either take it how it is or don't and i'm sure later down the road they were like damn i'm glad we listened to her but i know it was like a fight at the time now would you can consider her a one-hit wonder no no but i think a lot of people do consider her a one-hit wonder um but she had easily two hits because Gimme One Reason was huge. Right, right. And then Fast Car was huge, too. I forgot about Gimme One Reason. And then Crossroads was another big one. I don't remember that. That was off the second record. But, I mean, yeah, she had hits, but I think her hits overshadow the other pieces of the catalog. Oh, from what you just told me, definitely. If you go and listen to the album, like, just when you go home, listen to Across the Lines, and you'll be like, holy shit, this is vivid and dark. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think more people who know and love Tracy Chapman need to like go and listen to the whole record if you haven't, because the writing that you all love from Fast Car only expands and gets better throughout the rest of the record. Yeah, it's heavy. All right, go ahead next. Okay, I um another hip hop one. I think I, yeah, I finished my hip hop. And the, uh, I left the rapping on because it's a pain in the ass to get it off. But the Grave You're Diggers have first a album. Up glare on that record no matter what. Yeah, because it was already shiny. It's Mylar or whatever. Can you, um, kind of see it? You can see it. It's just a big glare. You're okay. Good. Well, uh, dude, um, there's sub, there's like two other albums that they did after that have the same name, but don't even sound like no, it. No, and like the Riz is not in it. it yeah. It's almost like a whole nother group. I think he just let them keep the name. Yeah. And it, then they kind of tried to go after it. I don't even know if Rizzo was involved in the ones after that. As far as I know, no. You know what I mean? I don't think he'd produced anything. Because the only other one I have is the third one. And uh, if anybody wants it, let me know. DM <laughs> me, dude. I can sell it to you. 
But uh, is it this worse invented, anything? I don't know. This invented like fucking horror core as as they call it, but mm. basically murder music, uh, in a hip hop form. Yeah. Um, but yeah, six feet deep. Fucking sick, dude. Everybody can see it just fine. Yeah, yeah. Cups of bloods on here. Um, it's just graphic, funny hip hop. Puts yeah. You know, I don't know. You got to be in the right mood, I guess, for it. Honestly, because of the like graphic nature of some of the yeah, shit, it's not like a Sunday driving no. with the family record. <laughs> but it, but it is to me. It's a fun. It's a fun record, and the work, like the wordsmithing, is amazing. It's like it's Wu Tang, but darker. You yeah. know what I mean? Sick ass beats. It's like horror Wu Tang, basically. Wu-Tang, I mean, Rizzo. perfect. Rizza bleeds Wu Tang everything he puts his fucking hands right. on. Like there's a tinge of it there. So yeah, I really uh I love that one. That came out in ninety four. What do you have next? My next is the police first record, Outlandis Diamore. Uh which actually this is my favorite police record. I uh uh, that was one I was going to bring, too, but I didn't because I knew you would. Yeah. They didn't have a bad album. No, they um, didn't. I do. There is, like, a few other versions of this where the, the police right here, like, I've seen a yellow one. I've seen a green one. Oh, um, mine's red, too. Yeah. But I think the red is the, the first, like, original one, and then they kind of did a couple random covers after that. Oh, like, okay. I don't have the yellow or green. If I see them, like, I would like to buy them just because. I have them, yeah. Uh, but this is, like... The more, like, they had a lot of reggae influence in this one, and it was the more, not really punky, but a little more uh, quicker tempo, less sort of radio hits yeah, I think that they was, were known for down the road. War, way more like a reggae and, yeah. like you said, like, uh, raw, raw sound, I would say. Yeah, I, for sure. And, I mean, Roxanne was the hit off here, obviously, but... I mean, So Lonely was a great song. Can't Stand Losing You. Can't Stand Losing You is probably the standout to me on that album. Yeah, that's my favorite track on the record. Um, Born in the 50s, it's a cool song. I like the nostalgia to it, but I would say to me that's sort of the weaker song on the album. Um, Just because... I don't, maybe it's because I wasn't born in the 50s. I'm sure somebody who was like, fuck yeah, me too, Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah, for sure. But the police, I mean, they didn't have a bad record in their whole catalog. Even the only song that the police had that I skip is um, that one song on Synchronicity where he's like, everything that I do always reminds me of my mother again or whatever. Okay. And he's going all psycho throughout the song. It just gets fucking annoying when no, he's like... Yeah, I know, exactly. It's like that Michael Jackson song on Off the Wall where he's crying. I think it's the last track. Yeah, that's fucking and it, silly, like, too. It kind of, like, ruins the rest of the record. I also don't listen to um, Every Breath I Take anymore off of Synchronicity. It's just way overplayed. But, and that's why I'm not saying it's a bad song. It's just I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. I don't have to. Um, but, yeah. Go I, ahead with I your got next. A, like, one. This is, like, probably my most way left field one. Okay. And it is my favorite one out of this person artist's um catalog. Dwight Yoakum oh, <laughs> Guitar and Cadillacs, dude. The most punk rock fucking I've heard you talk ever. about that record oh, actually I fucking before. Love it, dude. Honky Tonk Man and Guitars and Cadillacs were like the two. I know guitars and Cadillacs. And and the like the words to them are so tight, dude, because it's just he he has a an awesome voice for like a male singer, and he kind of just does, at the time, it's like Brooks and Dunn and you know all that kind of shit. Uh, who was the who was the other? I don't know my country from that time very well, honestly. I'm sorry. Dwight Yoakam. What year did it come out? This in? came out in nineteen. Actually, this came out in nineteen. I gotta look at my list. How do I know? Eighty six. But. Okay. That he so actually like, self-released like, this album in 84 or 85. Uh, okay, so it got a label debut in 86. Right, but if you have the... Uh, the um, Is the, the one, one put a out, different cover? Nope, it's the same thing. But if you have the one that he put out, might have a little money. But um, 
he covered Ring of Fire on it. I think like George Strait was probably big around that time. That's okay. Yeah, that's who I'm trying to think of. Those kind of people, I guess. Garth Brooks probably was 86. Yeah. Garth Brooks was a little later, but I feel like he probably had some shit in the 80s, too. But definitely, like, George Strait. But just, like, even how he dressed, dude. Nobody dressed like that. And tucked their boots in the Bakersfield sound he was bringing back, which was, like, Buck Owens and shit. Plus the old Cadillac's really cool. Oh, yeah. And and, uh, I used to collect guitars, or at least try to, you know? I mean, that shit's cool. And then... That's all he talks about is collecting guitars, Cadillacs, and fucking hillbilly music, dude. And then... <laughs> that I, I would not expect oh, it dude, to be on your yeah, list at all. I love this record, man. I'll fucking... I'll crank this bitch. Also, uh, Bury Me, that's a duet with this woman, uh, Maria McKee. That's really fucking cool, too. So, um, I tell you, like, the producers and all that kind of stuff, but I know nothing about these kind of... about these dudes. Yeah, that's going back further than... Well, I shouldn't say back further than I know. That's just out of my but yeah, dude, area of fucking expertise. Fucking rock and roll, dude. <laughs> uh, since we're recording on Father's Day, I had to put some fucking dad rock in here with Boston's first album. Nice. Uh, this is, like, one of my test records, like when you're setting up a new stereo and you want to hear if everything's dialed in right. This particular this particular is a Wally cut, which if you're yeah, familiar, Wally's awesome. Wally Trogett, he did like a bunch of Iron Maiden stuff, and uh, he's a world-renowned fucking in- sound engineer. If you uh, find Wally in the dead wax. Yeah, it's a little in the it'll center. It'll say Wally. Yep, it'll say Wally. Um, a lot of these are Wally cuts, and even the ones that aren't, they still sound pretty damn good, but the Wally in particular, it's like the equivalent to like uh, the RL Led Zeppelin II type of thing. Yeah. Like the mastering is just outstanding. Um, some of this stuff on the album, yeah, it's a little overplayed or overheard. Like, I mean, more than a feeling we've all heard like a billion times, but Peace of Mind is awesome. Smoking's a lot of fun. Something About You, like the whole record is... It's a great album. It's not something that I put on all the time or anything like that, but like I said, it is a test record that I use. So the mix is just like that good? Because I'm, I'm real familiar with it, yeah. so I know what to listen for. So if like I'm doing a home theater installation or something, this would be one of the things that I would test on it. Gotcha. Because I know, like, okay, this like high frequency should sound like this, or this mid should yeah, sound yeah, like yeah. that, so you can kind of pinpoint where your stereo needs to be. Um, and it's just a fun record in general anyways. But everything after that album, like, they didn't... I didn't care for Boston 2, 3, anything after that. Yeah, not, I never I'm listened to. I'm not a Boston to. guy. And I've tried. Like, I, I love their album covers. Like, I didn't know this for a long time, but this, like, spaceship yeah, thing Yeah, that shit there, looks cool as fuck. But it's a guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, the second one, they did a guitar on there, too. And I don't know. I just thought the artwork was really cool. But for years, I didn't notice that that was a guitar on there. Yeah, I had to be shown. I had to have somebody show me that, too, like, a few years back. Yeah. It's like, like on that, that Motorhead Sacrifice album yeah, where yeah. he's got the uh, his tongue's a dick. Yeah. I didn't notice that for a long time. Yeah, and now you can't unsee it. Yeah, every time you look at it, it's, <laughs> it's front like, and center. But yeah. you would think you would notice it any yeah. other time because it's so obvious. But it's but just we're not just looking don't for look dick. at that detail. <laughs> yeah, you're not like looking to Motorhead for dick. Yeah, dude. Let me keep it in your pants, bro. All right, what do you got? Next? One more rap, and then I will be done with the hip hop. Run DMC's first record. I love it. Um. Sucker MCs, I loved, actually heard that done by the Wu-Tang Clan on the first compact disc I ever purchased, which was a, in the beginning there was rap, which is a mixed album where everybody that was popular at the time, or not even popular, but like, um, no, they were popular, all covered no, different DMC songs. Was well, it was like Run DMC was on there, Wu-Tang was on there, Snoop Dogg, Puffy, Eric B and um, Red Man or Eric Sermon, I'm sorry, but anyway, yeah. um, Sucker MCs is on here. It's just a more raw sounding album. The drum machine, I mean, it just sounds like a straight 808 with just some breaks. You know, it's um, Hard Times 
Rockbox, Jam Master J, that song's on here. It's just a good all-around fucking old-school hip-hop record, man. Yeah, I mean, that kind of, like, set the standard for the sound at that time, really. And I mean, everybody was trying to be profile records, Run not Def Jam. Like, I know a lot of people think they're on Def Jam, but this was on profile records. Yep. the first few albums were on profile. So, I don't really have any farther to go with that you know i mean it's it's run dmc if you haven't heard of run dmc i i don't know man you must live under a rock or something yeah, I but know. i have had that happen actually there was a kid that came in he probably doesn't listen to this so but he came in and he was like hey do you guys have any hip-hop i'm like typically i don't have a lot of newer hip-hop because i'm not as knowledgeable with it and it's hard to come by around these parts even old youth stuff yeah, just don't and see like it. i don't know I know that people love, like, 21 Savage and shit. I don't know what records they buy. That, like that Right, time. right. Like, so, I, but I, this kid come in, he's asking for hip-hop. I showed him, like, Run DMC, Wu-Tang, et cetera, et cetera, Mob Deep, all that I stuff. I got a funny feeling where this and is And he going. was like, I've never heard of Run DMC. And I was like, holy shit. But, I mean, he was, I don't know, maybe 16 or something. So, I, I guess... I get it, but, like... We need to run a summer camp, dude. I know, but if you've listened to or just watched anything based around hip-hop, like a VH1 special, uh, that hip-hop evolution thing that they had on Netflix years ago... Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. anything that it, talks about the history of hip-hop, I guarantee it mentions Run DMC. It has to. So I'm like, man, how's this guy not heard of Run DMC? But I guess... I mean, shit, dude, I'm wearing Adidas. That shows an age thing, though, I guess. Uh, yeah, like, that's true. I don't know. Uh, my next one is Majesty's Vast Reaches Unclaimed. I, we, knew, I had a feeling you were going to do that one. We, I mean, the poster's behind me, too. We interviewed these guys, like, a while back. Um, I should have looked at the episode number beforehand. I want to say it's, like, 36 or something. But awesome guys, incredibly knowledgeable, but the record is just, like, pure perfection as far as oh, it's melodic fucking, death metal it's awesome. goes. I just left it off because it it was only one. Yeah, because they, they've only done one so far. Right. That's right. We were supposed to do that, but I feel like if Fuck people it, if people didn't listen to the interview, like yeah. I want more people to know about this record. Sure. That's why I got this poster so you can see my face in front of the record all the time. <laughs> so check it out. It was released on Twenty Bucks Spin. Um, it would have been like two years ago now, pretty much close around there. Or no, it would have been about a year and a half. But either way, check it out. Um, check out the interview for sure. But if you're a fan of like In Flames, At the Gates, Dark Tranquility, you know, Impaled Nazarene, all that. Yeah, dude, you'll Gothenburg, love it. Gothenburg, Sweden. All that shit is just uh, fucking phenomenal. Like if you like Horacle or Jester Race, you're going to love this. Yeah, and, this is kind of metal that's up my alley, dude. Yeah, it's Shit's like good. shit that... You melodic. admire the guitar work in, but it's not like a sort of an Ingve Malmsteen solo well, where it, you're being like, dude, check me out. I can yeah, fucking yeah. wail on guitar for like 16 minutes no, and I pull out a Freebird the song. solo. They, they play him to the song, man. Yeah. And I mean, Tanner, just him in general, like if you've heard Obsequia, like he really knows how to craft a song together to make everything work like the melodies and shit and he's just i don't know the guy's a great writer same with carl everybody else in the band too matt like he's, yeah they all have different projects yeah. going on and they're all amazing they all have multiple bands and they're all like good um but majesties and obsequii are the favorites of mine so i can mention I'm on a side note a label mate that almost made it onto my list but because i think they're getting better is worm yeah. yeah, but I think more people should know about that band. So Worm was that's another all I one that say. I almost put it on, but I was like, man, Foreverglade was better than Gloom Lord. Yep. I mean, yeah, that's how I feel. But I, I mean, they're both great more. records. You know, Devil Master could have been another one. Like, yep. Lamp of Murmur could have been another one, but they're they're like slowly getting better. Gate Stormkeep. I, Stormkeep. I almost put yeah, Stormkeep's that, first record. That's on why there. I left the metal metal off because I knew that would make it easier for me. Yeah. It was, I mean, we could have done a Just Metal debut, sure. but, so yeah, Majesty's Vast Reach is Unclaimed. Check out awesome. the interview, check out the album, uh, pick it up at your local record store, or order it if you don't already have it, because I know you'll fucking love it. And it's 20 bucks spin, man, it's it's reasonably priced. 
Yeah, it's like 20 bucks or 25, I think. So uh, my next one, another surprise, but Elvis Presley's first record. Uh, now, I know he's a singles, surprising. a singles, you know, guy, but um, I've had this particular copy since I was you know, 16, 17. And uh, it's just like a, like an old repress from like 1960, but I'll just, I'll show you if I can. I have like the insert. So you get all, like, I love this cool shit. You know what I mean? Like in the history of, uh, no, granted, I do not have all of these fucking albums. And <laughs> if think, you do, they're just, they made so many. They're not well, really a lot of them were like compilations. Yeah. And like, yes. yeah, we get a lot of people asking like, Oh, Elvis has got to be worth money. I'm like, yeah, you would think, but. Sir, the stuff that is, yeah, it is, but it's few and far between. That's a Dynaflex, though, yeah. isn't it? I can see it. No, it's not a Dynaflex. It's almost. It looks like it. It might be. Maybe it is a Dynaflex. That might have been, like, pre-Dynaflex before they started before calling they, it that. I think it, I think that's what it is. But anyways, Blue Moon on here is, like, my favorite version of Blue Moon. Um, Tutti Fruity's on here. Blue Suede Shoes. I Got a Woman. I mean, a lot of the singles, but it's just, uh, it's the classic album, man. I mean, who else ripped this shit off that we know? That's, yeah, The Clash. Yeah. And it, um, that's know? probably, like, the only Elvis record that I can really listen to. Uh, I'm not, like, a big Elvis fan, I but it is I love a good The album. King, but if I'm going to listen to an album, it's going to be this. Just, and I love the way it's recorded, and it, you know, in those old RCA studios, it's got like that haunting fucking, and that tape echo. Mm. It's like you can't, re you can't like replace or imitate that. No, you because come close, that was, but it's just it's the room. There's too many factors, man. There's a lot of music out there that its limitations at the time make it great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this album is definitely uh, one that does. But I know that that that's kind of a. An old person one, but like fuck, fuck you. <laughs> uh, my next is Obituary Slowly We Rot, which this is my favorite obituary record. I wouldn't say it's their best per se. Not that they've even had a bad one. I just think like John Tardy's vocals on this, like nobody else in that time period sounded like that. Actually, nobody even today sounds like that. I don't that. think you can tell obituary is obituary. Yeah, he's got that like real slimy like, I mean, I always called it slimy because of the slimy yeah, writing, yeah, yeah. but it just sounds sludgy, grimy, slimy, like nasty. His voice is unmistakable, like right when you hear it. And I just seen him live not that long ago again. And it's like he just keeps getting better, dude. Like, the, the last time I seen him was, like, 2017, 18, somewhere around there when that self-titled record yep. came out. And they were fucking phenomenal then, but when I just seen him again, like, it, it's That's like so the awesome. guy just keeps getting better. And his voice, you would think, like, being 30-plus years into metal, singing that way, it would take a toll on your voice. But I think this is one of those, like, scenarios where... It's just the way he sounds in general, and he's able to project that with yeah, his voice. Yeah. It's kind of like how like nobody he knows what he's doing to like keep it in check and not blow it out. I guess. Yeah, but also like I think his natural voice has something to do with it. It's kind of like how nobody can rap like Andre Three Thousand because of his accent. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But yeah. Obituary hasn't done a bad record. I've heard. I overheard some people at the concert that were like, "Oh, they had kind of a." fall off there for a while like i didn't like the um self-titled album or i didn't like this album. i'm like fuck did you even listen to it well, like, it's like i guess everybody's the, entitled to their own shitty yeah. opinion <laughs> yeah even if it's wrong i guess you can uh, be yeah. entitled to it but that was uh definitely like a staple in the death metal scene um especially the florida death metal scene uh, if you haven't heard that record for whatever reason you need to hear it if you're a metal fan um Remember when they just put out the the live version of it? Yeah. But they just like well, it was live in studio. Yeah, like and it, live one take. But, but it sounds but fucking even that, awesome, like, man. Those sounded I would say good. That's how they sound live. It was a little gimmicky, the sale point. But yeah. okay, you just said it. If they sound like that live, then yeah, like I showed you that video on my phone. Yeah, like they're fucking phenomenal yeah, live. It's just they don't, dope, dude. The quality there does not degrade whatsoever. 
Oh, I just, uh, we're getting used to it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a good one. You want to see the next one? I know. I just seen it, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, go ahead. The 13 floor elevators. Um, this is the psychedelic sounds. That's what they call it. This one's a repress on like red. So it's not like worth anything, but I don't give a shit. Cause it's fucking awesome. Garage rock. Um, you're gonna miss me is the the big song on it, but you can just let it go. I love that. It's kind of like in the like the Sonics or um, the Rationals, things like that. That garage rock sound, mm. and they weren't. And it's like a little psychedelic, but it's later on they really got fucking weird. You know what I mean? But I know this that is my, this is my favorite one. I know that record in particular helped influence Ministry to start distorting his voice. Oh, like really? Al Jorgensen started distorting yeah, his voice because cool. of that. But um, I mean, I don't really, I can't, I can't really say too much about it except for you know, it's, it's fucking. I think that's one rock. that's you have to very, listen to it. Yeah, I think that's a very unknown kind of staple of that scene that people who don't know of it are going to be glad that they found it. I would, yeah, I when I first heard it, which was not very long ago, maybe five, eight years ago, I was like, how have I not, because I've always been a fan of, like, the Stooges, the Sonics, that kind of shit. Yeah. Found that and was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, they were kind of, like, pioneers of garage yeah, rock, yeah. really. Uh, my next is, oops, I guess I did have another hype sticker. My next would be, like, the American counterpoint to... Never mind the Bullocks, at least in my opinion. Uh, Dead Boys, Young, Loud, and Snotty came out right around the same time. Uh, to me, it's like one of the... It's kind of like a staple punk rock yeah, album. Dude, I, like, you I need to, you again, need to I hear it, it if you I would have brought it. Yeah, I was like, fuck, I don't know if Jeremy's going to put bring that on anyway. there or not, but I was like, I, I'm going to bring it anyway. Maybe we'll have the same, but... I mean, they were out of Cleveland, Ohio. They weren't based in New York, but they did a lot of playing in New York. So I think sort of like the Dayton family, since they were in a less hot spot area, yeah. they weren't as well known. I mean, yeah, like punk rock people know about them, but I've met people that are, you know, older guys that were hanging out at CBGBs and shit that never heard of the Dead Boys. So I think it just yeah, might have been like time and place type of thing. Everybody knows who the fucking Ramones are, but nobody knows about the Dead Boys which is sad. I, I guess, guess that's if you've, not completely true, but like you said. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Ramones are a household name, whereas the Dead Boys are not. Like, if you look on the Rolling Stones list of best debut albums ever, yeah. the Ramones' first record is number one. Dead Boys is not even in the hundred. I, um... Or is it? It might be. I know Nevermind the Bullocks is in there, but I don't think Dead Boys see, was. See, I left... I also didn't bring um, those because of the single album thing. Yeah, well, Dead Boys had to, though. We've come for your children. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, Lords of the New Church would have been another good one to put on there, but I don't have that. Um, I left that one, too. My next one, though, since you have that one, I'm just going to, we're going to do it together. Oh, is it? You brought but it, I bought, too? I brought Stiv Bader's, though, first album. Oh, okay. Which every track on here to me is like. I thought you solid. brought the same record. I thought I brought the Dead Boys. No, I thought you brought the same as my last one. Oh no no, but uh, I just thought bring Stiv. So if you like the Dead Boys, you'll like this. And also Lords of the New Church. If you don't know about yeah, them, check that out. Get that shit. But see, I don't. Again, that's another one where I don't know if the first record's my favorite or not. Because it's like I would say it's the one I've heard the most. I don't know if it's and the uh, uh so it's kind of like they have two, but they only have one, and then the other albums are like compilations of live shit and all. It's like I wish there was a proper fucking release for that shit. Yeah, but um, yeah, uh, Stiv anyway. Evil Boy, fucking I love that song. Um, what's that fucking track? Million Miles Away. That's like, that's. Everybody should go listen to that. If we had like some rights or whatever to play it, I would play it. But um, yeah, this is just a repop on Bop Records. Bop, Bop, came out in nineteen eighty. All right, my last one is also like my favorite debut, just all together. Um, 
and just one of my favorite albums in general altogether too i think it's this is one of the best debut albums yeah i left that at home because i knew you were bringing it yeah um particularly i like this version the found 77 masters but there is this demo sessions version as well yep uh the mix sounds a little bit different because i know like before this came out pretty much everybody in the band had their hands in it and they were all changing it like how they wanted to i've sold this demo sessions one to somebody and they didn't like it and i was like huh that's weird but i went back and listened to it and i guess if you don't like the other version you probably won't like this one because you weren't like warmed up to the songs but vocally the demo one is a little more rocky uh, okay it just doesn't sound as the vocals are a little more nasally and shit, I guess. It doesn't bother me, but like, I guess if you were somebody that wasn't really a punk rock or rock and no, roll No, when I listen person, to that album, I put on the the original one just because it's it's just the one I always listen to. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, this to me, like, is just, it's punk rock, but it's rock and roll too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely no, embodies sure. a lot of 50s rock because Johnny Thunders, yeah. Jerry Nolan, all those guys were really into that. Fuck yeah. Um, but like Chinese Rocks, I think is like one of the greatest junkie songs ever made. I, not to you know glamorize that or anything or try to like bring no your, that you no, know it's definitely like the just fucking the way it's written stole that shit too yeah and I mean they did a cover of uh, the Contours Do You Love Me on here mm -hmm. and I love that song to begin with. It's already a little raspy, rocky kind of sounding for the year it came out in, but they just took it and made it like that much more amplified, that much more fun. And I don't know, just the whole record start to finish. Like I can put it on at any point in time and just enjoy the shit out of it, jump around the house. Yeah, everybody whatever. needs to jam fucking some Johnny Thunders. I think this is one of those records that should be, like if you've never heard it, it should be on those lists of like 100 albums to hear before you die. Cause oh, for it's sure. Just that good to for me. sure. Uh, maybe not everybody else is really going to think the same, but I, was I almost put bring... Richard Hell's Blank Generation on there too. I left that at home. I almost, because I thought you were going to do that. I had it on there, but then I changed it. I had television, Marky Moon also. Okay, I didn't have that. Because Marky Moon is better than the Adventureland or whatever the second one was called. Agreed. Adventure. I, it's a good record. But so Alone from Johnny Thunders, I was going to bring. But then I was going to bring that too, Stib but then instead. I was like, eh, Heartbreakers. Because I it thought it'd be too obvious for me to bring johnny thunders so it's like i don't want to do that yeah i mean and i left the dolls like i said at home because i just posted about it but if you haven't heard that fucking album go listen to it right now that's the best thing todd rungdon's ever done yep. for music i can't stand that guy's yep. music but he uh he executive produced that record and got it out there but yeah new york dolls uh if you i'm gonna say this as a hot take so if you listen to aerosmith Aerosmith ripped off the New York Dolls completely and made it to where the stuff that they were doing, like New York Dolls were ahead of their time. So like Steven Tyler pretty much just jacked all that, pitched it to the record label and it worked for them. But for the New York Dolls, they pretty much struggled all of their careers. I mean, David Johansson does a bunch of like doo-wop kind of weird random shit now. Fucking Poindexter, bro. Yeah, yeah, but like uh, Johnny Thunders, like throughout his whole life, he never got any like recognition. Every point that he seemed like he was about to kind of break through, something screwed something up. happened. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, he was a horrible junkie. Like that—that's the life There's you live. That's what you're gonna get. A great get, documentary but. out called "Looking for Johnny," and in that documentary, a former girlfriend says like. You know, because he loved Keith Richards so much. So he's like, what? Keith Richards is a junkie? And yeah. his, old lady, his old lady at the time or whatever is like, yeah, but he was rich and a rock star first. You right. know, like he kind of yeah, like. And Johnny Thunders it. like developed a habit before he became a rock star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he it. didn't even have long enough in life to become a rock star because he died yeah. so young. I mean, Keith Richards is like in his fucking 80s or something. Yeah, it's he's like, still how is alive. he still alive, right? And also, back to Stiv Bader's, there's a um, a documentary about Stiv out that's really good because he passed away as well, um, but not from drugs. 
Do you have one more still, or was I, that I your have, last one? I have one more. I was I was like counting in my head, but I was like, I don't know. The Velvet Undergrounds with Velvet Underground with Nico. Is that does that throw you off a little bit? I don't know. Nineteen sixty seven came out on the um Verve. This is a repop. Yeah, you can tell by how um, shiny it yeah, is. Yeah, shiny. Still has the peel, which I'm not gonna peel. It I honestly doesn't sound all that great, but it's Lou Reed and um John Cale and Nico, so it can sound a little yeah, and I'm not gonna pay I mean, it was the '60s. Plus, if you want an original copy, yeah, it's that, ridiculous. That's clean and playable. It's insane. Ridiculous. So, yeah, anybody gets a chance. This this is kind of again back to. I've never liked that record. No. Now, see, I'm a I'm a. I've huge really fan tried to also like I've, I l- appreciate their influence. Um, like Lou Reed was a huge influence on rock, punk, yep. anything, all that stuff. The look, the sound, etc. Like opens up. I just. I don't know. I just never liked the guy. Like his songs are just kind of boring to me. And maybe that's well, like one of those things that'll change down the road. But there's heroin. That's considered one of the best fucking junkie songs. And then of course, um, Lou Reed also wrote. And that might be one of those things I gotta his, go back and yeah, listen maybe. to it because it's been a few years. But but I will definitely like Femme Fatale. I will def Sunday morning. I'll definitely say that Nico is not for everybody. And. Yeah, she's an acquired taste. Yeah, and it's like her <laughs> albums, like you know, that I've gotten from like Record Store Day, like this, the past. Rec- I'm like, I'm not even gonna attempt it because it came out in like '86, and she was, uh, yeah, a very, very rough. So um, they just, you know, they're very hit or miss as far as sound goes. But um, the underground, like, I mean, they influenced everybody. Oh yeah, and I just—I um, mean that I, whole I'm, scene. I is... almost put Jimi Hendrix on here too. But... I was kind of expecting you to, but I don't know. That's uh, that's another one where he like, yeah, his debut was great, but I it, feel there's like better stuff. there's better stuff. And the debut was kind of—it's mm-hmm. been talked about to death. It's been played to death. And what else can you really say about it? I like um, the Vela Underground second album called White Light, White Heat, but there's no Nico, and. So it's not it's a whole different sound. You know what I mean? Right. So it's almost like a different record. But and this would be my you know favorite one. But that's all I got, man. I was um before we start to wrap up here, I was gonna put Sade's Diamond Life on there. I left that. Um, I thought you would do that too. I just really like that like she wrote the song How Am I Gonna Make It, like on the back of an unpaid bill. And like that's, oh, that's what, awesome. That's like what made her make it. I always thought that was a really cool story because, like, how coincidental is that that yeah. that would happen? I mean, that would happen one in a million times. Yeah, so. that, it's cool, like, crazy fucking stories like that, man. Yeah, and there was, um, I don't know, there I, I had a list, but I'm not going to take up too much time going through all of it, but there was a lot that it was harder, actually, than I thought to narrow it down. Yeah, but I, it, like I said, I tried agree. to keep it not common. And that's why if I was like, okay, if I cut out hardcore and metal, then it's like it made it easier for me, and then I figured it'd throw you off, and you'd be like, "Why are you bringing in Dwight yeah. Yoakam, dude?" I'm like, and it, I love it, dude. I mean, the Dwight Yoakam I don't listen threw to it me, all the time. Threw but me way off. I was it's not expecting dope, it, dude. But I have heard you talk about it now that I yeah. Now that you uh, bring it out, I remember. And it's just you know, it's it's like I used to listen to it a lot more when I used to drink too. I guess would you you know what I mean? Well, that like twangy country shit, like that's good drinking music i don't know it like but i think the same way that like cypress hill is like good stoner music yeah 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 dwight dwight yoakam i think because they were like that was their like primary substance at the time probably and when i heard it i was uh i was getting pretty loaded at that time shout out to cole cummings he he introduced me to dwight but i might have to ask him about that tomorrow he knows what's up (laughs) Um, but unless you have anything else, we'll wrap stuff oh, up man. here. Um, um, let us know in the comments uh, some of your favorite debuts. We, uh, like I said, we tried to do this on Instagram and it was uh, didn't really work out. So hopefully this uh, one went over better. But let us know in the comments some of your favorite debuts. We're curious to hear about them, or even some that you uh, hated too would be great. Oh yeah, dude. Um, we could um, we could totally do this again with. Albums that, that you, sucked. Oh yeah, for sure. 
but uh yeah i don't i don't have anything else i just uh, appreciate everybody listening um yeah and keep following uh, us dagger face duval Soundwave slave and the podcast follow us on youtube too now that we're going to be doing more video episodes we'll uh, make sure to keep up to date on all that and all of our social media links are in our episode descriptions. Um, as always, shop Blast Beats Vinyl. The website link is in our episode description. You can use our promo code NOISE for 10% off your first order. Uh, they always have a ton of awesome metal stuff. I tell you that all the time. So hopefully you've gone and checked it out by now because they really are the best one-stop metal shop. And it is it is reasonable if you can't find there's shit you cannot find and he'll have it at a reasonable fair price it's not like super boutique like yeah nothing check it out man you save 10 percent. you're never spending like a hundred dollars on a record no. unless it's like a box set or something like that that's a whole other story but anyway uh thanks for listening and uh peace out